What is happening, boys and girls? Jim here, RCAD. Today is December 25th, 2021, Christmas Day, Christmas afternoon, and this is my third unboxing video for the day. Kyosho Trail King. This vehicle belongs to my brother. I bought this for him for Christmas. Where are we eating? What? Is that from you and I? What? Yeah. What? Oh, no way! Oh, cool. Thank you. Oh. So what we're going to do today is a quick overview on the box. We're going to read everything that the box has to say. Get the vehicle out of the box, check it out nice and thoroughly. And another thing that I want to check on is whether or not, whether or not the vehicle is lithium polymer compatible, lipo compatible. I know my Blizzard FR was not lipo compatible. <laughs> Didn't say anything in the manual whether it was or wasn't. So, you know, nothing telling you not to use a lipo. But the first day that I ran my Blizzard FR, I burned up my ESC within minutes running a 50C 2S lipo. So we want to check this one out thoroughly and see if it's LiPo compatible or not. See if there's any differences on the two vehicles. I know in the product description when you're looking at this vehicle online on websites, uh, once again, it doesn't necessarily show you anything about whether it being LiPo compatible or not. So that's one thing that we're going to look into. We're going to check it out and see if this vehicle is LiPo compatible. Taking a look at the box. Kyosho Belt Drive Vehicle Blizzard 2.0 Series Trail King www.kyosho.com. Here's a picture of our yellow Trail King, picture of the blue Trail King, 112 scale radio controlled electric power belt vehicle, ready set, ready to run, 2.4 gigahertz radio system, USB charger, Kyosho Speedhouse nickel metal 2200 milliamp battery. So it comes with a nickel metal battery pack. All right, we got the box spun around, checking out one of the sides here. Uh, after we get done here looking at everything, we'll take the camera off the tripod and get a closer view at everything that we have on the box. Uh, as far as the box sides go, absolutely nothing on the bottom of the box, and the side opposite of this one is all in Japanese. So this side is in English, other side is in Japanese, showing the exact same stuff. Uh, so not to be redundant, Kyosho Belt Vehicle, Trail King, Blizzard 2.0 Series battery, 7.2 volt, 2200 milliamp, nickel metal battery, comes with a USB charger, transmitter, 2.4 gigahertz, synchro KT431S transmitter. Explore the outdoors. The newest addition to the 112 scale electric belt vehicle series further enhances your outdoor experience. Kyosho's long selling blizzard that has stood the test of time with a legion of loyal fans has been used as a base for the new Trail King. Among its many features, a completely new body design creates the retro feel of a hard working machine, in addition to the realistic finish with separate accessory parts. The underbody incorporates a cockpit and always on front and rear LED lights. The loading platform at the back also provides space for a variety of things to be carried as the model is fully preassembled. The advanced mechanics of the Trail King are ready to be enjoyed straight away. Compatibility with spare and optional parts for the Kyosho Blizzard allow you to expand your enjoyment of the snow and sand adventures even further. A large radio box is designed to accommodate your choice of speed controller and motor. Max dimensions for speed controller are 36mm by 32mm by 23mm. Here's a picture of that area right there. Sprocket and chain drive system utilizes a moderate number of gear teeth and pitch to realize strong resistance and ensure footed driving control. Universal bullet connectors on motors. Two white LED lights on the front bumper, two red on the rear. Uh, they're attached to the chassis, so you don't have to worry about unplugging those when you remove the body. Suspension travel allows wheels to move up and down so the tracks can roll smoothly over obstacles and uneven terrain or uneven surfaces. Truck type design of the body is fully complete and ready to power over any surface. Injection molded accessory parts such as mirrors, wipers, and loading platform combine with the under body and driver seat to produce an incredible level of scale realism. Then over here on the right side we have some optional parts not included. Sprocket silver plated two pieces, wheel silver plated two pieces, steel pinion gear, heavy metal caterpillar tracks, rear killer unit, metal blade for the front arm as well as getting the plastic blade itself and the rest of the linkage. So you can get chrome plastic idler wheels along with chrome plastic drive wheels for the tracks versus the black. You can get the power tiller unit for the back. You can get the plastic blade for the front. And they also make an aluminum blade support for the front as well versus having uh, the metal tie rods. So that is basically everything that we have on this side of the box. Spinning the box around, checking out one of the sides here. Both sides are the same. So not much to see, once again, just our two Trail Kings, yellow and blue, which is once again more orange, 112 scale, ready to run, blah, blah, blah. There we go, ours is marked off in yellow down here. All right, we got the camera off the tripod. Let's take a closer look at the box here. Kyosho Belt Vehicle Blizzard 2.0, 7.2 volt, 2200 milliamp battery. There's our USB charger. Here's our Synchro KT431S transmitter. 
Looking at our specs down here, length 360 millimeters, width 310 millimeters, height 200 millimeters, weight approximately 1610 grams. Once again, here's our writing on Explore the Outdoors, our large radio box, our twin 370 motors, headlights built right into the grill, tail lights right back here on either side, there's our rocker switch, battery lays flat down the center of the chassis. Plastic tracks on the vehicle, picture of our headlights, they look kind of dim, picture of our tail lights. Looking at our optional parts over here, not included, sprocket silver plated, wheel silver plated, steel pinion gear, heavy caterpillar tracks, rear tiller unit, metal blade arm. The metal blade arm is just this little upper arm right here. Normally there's two end links down here, adjustable end links for adjusting your blade, and this is just a straight aluminum piece that fits in there. The blade itself is plastic. There's a look at our rear tiller unit, which is powered, a look at our metal caterpillar tracks, and our chrome plastic idler wheels and drive wheels running down the tracks. Metal tracks versus plastic tracks, uh, advantages, disadvantages. Uh, metal tracks, pretty heavy. <laughs> it's going to be harder on your drivetrain and on your gears trying to shuffle around with those metal tracks. Probably wouldn't want to drive around in the grass with them. I'd imagine the transmission probably can't handle it uh, or any other kind of material that's going to uh, be a high traction environment. Snow and ice, they would be fine. Plowing your driveway, they'd probably work out great. Plastic track versus metal tracks. Plastic tracks are great in deep snow. When it comes to deep snow, the lighter your vehicle is, the better it does. And uh, from what I've experienced with the blizzards, it doesn't matter how deep the snow is. It can be six inches deep or four feet deep. It doesn't matter if it's all powder or not. The blizzard only sinks down a minimal amount. So it doesn't matter how deep the snow is, the blizzard only sinks in a little bit, at least with the plastic tracks. Not sure how it would do with metal. All right, let's peel the lid off this guy. See what it's looking like in here. Excuse my arms and whatnot for getting in the way. Not much to see right at the moment. Let's key our flash on and tilt our box up a little bit so you can see inside it. There's our truck, Trail King, orange paint. Transmitter sitting up in the front here. Manual right over here on this side. Let's start sliding this stuff out of here see what she's all about. We still have our flash key down here a little bit so bear with me on that. We got our manual along with our USB charger and a small Allen wrench in there as well. Let's use camera angles and lighting. We'll get better looks at everything here after we get done. All right let's pull out our top layer which is taped in so we're gonna need a knife for that guy. Nothing fancy today, no fancy knives. Just a standard box cutter getting pretty dull. There we go. We'll leave that out in case we need it for something else here. Yep, we need it for something else. The transmitter is taped in on the inside. So we got our transmitter out of the box. Well, not quite out of the box, it's still in another box. We'll get this guy opened up here right quick, cut some more tape. Once again, this is my brother's vehicle, but he gave me permission to open it up and do an unboxing video for you guys. So here we go, peek at the radio, transmitter, all bubble wrapped, that is nice, nice and protected. Battery cover is off on the back of it. Runs on four AA batteries. Cover just snaps on nice and easy. No little Phillips screws to screw in and unscrew. Four channel transmitter. Pretty basic. Works out pretty well. Good transmitter in all reality. All right, peeling on our cardboard supports here and retrieving our truck. And I see the battery is taped in on the bottom. There's our battery right down there in the center of the box, taped in. She's taped in pretty good. Yeah, they had that baby in there pretty darn good. Also wrapped in plastic. Here's our 2200 milliamp battery. 
Kyosho Speedhouse with T style or Dean style connector on there. Nickel metal once again on our battery. All right, let's get this box out of the way. The box appears to be empty. And then we've got our Trail King. All right, so getting a first look at our Trail King here sitting on the bench. Bear with me on our lighting conditions. I'm out in my barn and it is kind of dark out here, so let me turn down the camera to zero. This is our normal lighting conditions with the flash on. So that would be our normal color on the vehicle. Nothing is uh, skewed. Crank up our brightness just a little bit to eliminate some shadows. We're at 0 0.50%, 0 0.67%, 0.67. So crank up the brightness slightly. Peeling the plastic off of our body very carefully. Once again, this is not my vehicle, it belongs to my brother. There we go. Plastic has been removed. And we can get a good look at our truck. Plastic mirrors once again. Windows are somewhat tinted here. Can't really see inside the chassis with the windows. Looking at the front of the truck, we can see our lights in the grill on either side. Trail King on the front windshield, the windshield wipers. I like the little white stripes on there, it looks pretty good. Complements the truck nicely. Front windshield is tinted. No brackets on the front for the blade. So you'd have to get all of that hardware for the vehicle. Looking at the passenger side of the vehicle, same thing, little door handle sticker here, tinted windows, a mirror on the side. Uh, reflectors on the mirrors. Seeing little white stickers there on either side on the mirror, so that's kind of cool. Has a nice little pickup box here up on top. Tilt our camera up a little bit there. It is relatively deep on the inside. About an inch, inch and a half maybe, deep on the inside. So a good size bed on the back of the truck. And both of our body pins are in here as well. So we'll peel those body pins out of there in one second. Looking at the back of the truck. We have our tail lights on either side. Our little rocker on off switch right here. And this little port right down here is for the rear tiller unit. And I would imagine there's a servo linkage arm that would come out of here for raising and lowering, lowering the rear tiller unit. So let's peel the body pins out of this guy and see what she looks like under the hood. Very carefully peeling our body off of the vehicle. Spinning the vehicle around. Checking out our body. There is a seat on the inside, on the inside of the body. There is a steering wheel of sorts right down in there. Cockpit, once again, can't really see inside here too well with the tint that they have on the window. So I think we're going to have to cut out some tint here and peel that stuff off. That way we can see inside the cockpit of the vehicle. And possibly add a driver in the future. So it does have a cockpit in here. It does have a bench seat in here. But the window tint is blocking any kind of view of looking at that. The steering wheel on the vehicle, from what I can see, is like an airplane style steering wheel, or what you would see on a snowcat, or an old Honda Odyssey, very similar. Excuse the flash. Once again, I can't really see inside the interior very well just because of all the uh, tints on the windows. Let's crank up our tripod here and take a look at the inside of our chassis. Alright, here's a look at the inside of our chassis. We have our battery cable right here, on off switch at the back. Your battery tray is right down here on the bottom. Battery lays in here nice and flat, gets held in via this Velcro strap. Here is where the ESCs are located and your receiver as well, your antenna cable, and your twin RS370 motors. And here are the transmissions on either side. Now it would be nice if they made some metal gears for this guy. Pretty sure that they don't. But metal gears or some Delron gears uh, would be nice. But there we go, there's a look at the inside of our chassis. Look at our front grille there and our two LED lights. No plow hookups here on the front. Look at the back. Once again, our two LEDs on either side. Look down the center. See our battery tray down in there. Now one thing I'm noticing here with the body, we have our two little locators right here on the front. 
And we can see on our chassis that it has two little posts right there. So when you put the body on, you want to slide those two holes into those posts and set it down just like that. So there we go. All right, before we get a battery in this thing and check out our lights and check out its general range of motion, let's uh, read the manual and see if it's LiPo compatible or not. Opening up the manual bag here, which was nice. They have a Ziploc bag on the manual. That's pretty cool. We have a bind plug in there. We have our USB charger in there, as well as an Allen wrench or hex wrench. And here's a peek at our manual. Now, I breeze through the manual off camera just to read all our safety precautions and all that other nonsense, which is in several different languages. Uh, so basically, you just get one sentence in one language and <laughs> the rest is in a different language. Uh, nothing on the front cover about the LiPo battery. We've got a couple pages marked in here where it talks about lithium polymer batteries. But I did find something interesting right here. Do's and do nots. Do not run your car on ground that is overgrown with grass, that is muddy, sandy, or rocky, puddles, sand, or river. <laughs> so uh, overgrown grass is probably going to cause the tracks to bind up. Muddy ground, sandy ground, rocky ground, puddles, once again, sand and river. Sand is bad for these guys. It gets up inside our bogey wheels and inside the suspension and kind of binds things up a little bit. So sand isn't really, isn't really all that good for them. They do well in sand. They perform well in sand. Uh, but it really kind of a pain in the butt when it comes to maintenance on your vehicle. So yeah, there's some do's and don'ts with the vehicle. That was just one thing that I had found that I thought was interesting. And over here on this side, this product is compatible with both 7.4 volt lithium polymer LiPo and 7.2 volt nickel metal batteries. So it says that right there. This product is compatible with both 7.4 volt lithium polymer batteries and 7.2 volt nickel metal. So apparently you can run on a LiPo. So that's good to know. Once again, it doesn't say, uh, it doesn't necessarily say that anywhere on any of the product descriptions for the vehicle that I've seen on any other websites. Now I have one other page marked back in here. Let me dig through and find that for y'all. Moving towards the back of the manual, optional parts back here. Spare parts over on this side, parts for Snowblade down there. They do have some blown up images of the vehicle and everything is labeled and marked so it's very easy to tell what part is what. Steel pinion gear set, heavy metal caterpillar tracks, rear tiller unit, the blade for the front arm. But right down here I was looking at batteries, Kyosho Speedhouse 2200 milliamp battery, 7.2 volt. Over on this side they list a Gen Zace 4000 milliamp 45C. 7.4 volt 2S LiPo. Japanese market only, with a little star next to it. So the Gen Zace is starred, and this battery is starred as well. So Japanese market only. Maybe they just can't ship it overseas. I'm not too sure. But there we go on that nonsense. Yes, you can run a LiPo battery on this vehicle. Part numbers for our ESC K06091W ESC 60 amp. Brushed ESC. PSHKA060-91W. And that is a different ESC that came in my Kyosho Blizzard FR. So my Blizzard FR was not LiPo compatible, but the Trail Kings are. Alright, we got a battery for the vehicle. I'm going to throw a little WL Toys battery in here. 25C 2S LiPo, 2200 milliamp. I run two of these in my Kyosho Blizzard. My Kyosha Blizzard is slightly different. I'm running two Axial AE5 ESCs inside that. And I run two batteries along with two Traxxas Titan 380 motors. Inserting our batteries, positive to positive, and negative to negative. Pay no attention to the battery brand. Just running with what works. All right, we have all our batteries inside the transmitter. Cover back on. Powering on the transmitter. There we go, all green. Removing our body. 
excuse my arm there. We're just going to set the battery inside here. We're not really going to drive the vehicle around. Just want to check it, make sure that the tracks are both working and operating properly, make sure that the lights are working properly. It's my main goal here for this test. Once again, this is my brother's vehicle, so I'm not looking to get it dirty. Let's turn our transmitter on just in case they left the on-off switch in the on position. All right, get our Dean's plug plugged in here. We have our chassis turned on. See our headlights up front. Our taillights in the back. Taillights look pretty nice. We'll kill our lights here and get a better view of it. Shut off our flash. So there's a shot of our taillights. They look pretty good. They look nice on there. View of our headlights. Not very bright. Kind of a bluish light coming off of them. Not very bright at all. Some Yeah Racing Ultra Bright LED lights might be a little bit better. Get our flash back on. Get our lights kicked back on here so we can see what's going on. And we're just going to check our tracks once again. Make sure that everything is working properly here. Right stick for the right track. Left stick for the left track. Forward reverse seems to work. Check out our other side. Yep, everything seems to be working properly. And we are running on a 2S LiPo, so we know it runs on a LiPo battery without any problems. Checking the top to make sure that that ESC isn't getting hot. <laughs> And the whole top half here is a little bit different than the Blizzard as well. Blizzard has a clear Lexon cover that goes over top of our motors and the ES. Blizzard has a clear Lexon cover that goes over top of our motors and the ESC and the receiver and all that nonsense, kind of a little dust cover to keep the snow off it. And this one is all open on the inside, once again. So, other slight differences between the Blizzard and the Trail King. Alright, we're going to power this guy off, excuse my reach, unplug our battery, take our battery out of the machine, and shut off our transmitter. Alright, let's get the Kyosho Blizzard out here for a split second, and check out some of these subtle differences with our little Lexon cover, and the receiver box. Alright, check it out my Kyosho Blizzard FR. Excuse the body, this is a Radio Shack Samson body. Yes, I do still have my Kyosho Blizzard FR body. It's in perfect condition, just sitting off on a shelf. So looking at the Kyosho Blizzard FR, looking at our linkage up front real quick here. This has adjustable tie rods on the front versus that aluminum linkage that you can buy for it, the aftermarket linkage, and it is equipped with a snowplow. So looking on the inside here, let's peel the body open on this guy real quick here. Got it on a hinge so I can just flip it forward. Here's what we're looking at with our Lexon cover. So this one has a cover going across the front of it. Just because I think the Blizzard body may be just a little bit more open on the sides. Our Trail King body covers up on the inside pretty well. With our uh, built-in fenders and whatnot that tucks in here pretty good and makes it for a pretty good cover. So that's probably why they eliminated the cover on that. Off my homemade lid here. Yeah, this one's not done yet. I just have a lot of projects going on. Just haven't gotten around to finishing it. I need to block out the wheel wells on the truck and whatnot and perfect some things. Perfect some things on it. So looking at the inside, I've got two axial AE5s in here. And I run those two WL toy batteries back to back right in here, both sitting sideways. So two batteries, two ESCs, and it runs twice as long. It'll run for uh, right around 85 minutes with these two 380 motors. And uh, don't quote me on turns, but I want to say that these guys are like 18 turn motors, if I'm not mistaken. And the only reason my 
Luxon cover is sitting up higher along that edge there. It's not necessarily because of the motors, it's because of that linkage going to the front plow. These motors are a little bit longer, or quite a bit longer, than the stock 370 motors. And normally that linkage would run right behind this motor, right through here, leading up to the front. And since the motors, these 380s, go all the way to the side, I had to custom bend my linkage to go up and over top of the motor. So that's what raises and lowers the plow. So since I did that, I had to raise up that cover ever so slightly, just to clear that linkage. And different ESC on this one, different receiver cover on this one as well. Hard to tell with our little cover on there, but totally different shape. There's like a bulge here where the receiver's sitting, and then it steps down right in this area where the two ESCs were sitting. They had the two ESCs, one here and one here side by side, and then the receiver was sitting right over here. So the box is stepped down right here, and then it's raised up right there. So a totally different receiver box compared to the Trail King, which is pretty much just a big square. So there's a quick look at the Blizzard FR and the subtle differences between the Blizzard FR and the Trail King. Once again, Lexon cover over top of the motors, different shaped receiver box. Blizzard FR is not LiPo compatible. Don't hook that thing up to a LiPo. You're going to melt it down. <laughs> Trail King, no cover over top of the motors. Totally different shaped receiver box. And it is LiPo compatible. Uh, at least the manual states that it is. Wouldn't put it on 3S. Only 2S LiPo compatible. It says that right in the manual. 7.4 volt 2S LiPo or 7.2 volt nickel metal pack. But they also state in the manual that they kind of recommend running the nickel metal pack. Only reason that I can find that they would want you to run a nickel metal pack is probably because of the battery's location sitting down here in the bottom of the chassis and that it's subject to getting snow in there, which could melt and turn into water and uh, get your battery wet, which could turn into a fire or a possible explosion. And that's pretty much the only conclusion that I can come up with for why they would want you to run that nickel metal pack versus a LiPo. Run times, on the other hand, nickel metal pack, your run times are extremely low. You're talking uh, 15, 20 minutes tops. LiPo pack, on the other hand, your runtime goes up exponentially. <laughs> uh, anywhere between, you know, 45 minutes to an hour plus. So uh, I prefer running LiPos, but uh, you guys can do whatever you want to do. So there we go. We got her all back together, and she is ready for her first run. And that'll be coming up here in a couple of days, just waiting on some snow. <laughs> all right, boys and girls, that is going to do it. Once again, today is Christmas, so Merry Christmas to everybody out there. As always, questions and comments are always welcome, and we will see you all on the next video. Thanks again. Is our first day upgrade on the Kyosho Trail King. Merry Christmas once again, 2021, and we will see you all on the next video. Thanks again.